Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,622. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited to share with you today very special guest calling in from San Antonio, Texas, Michael Dobbins. Hey, Michael, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I sure am, Mark. All right. We're ready to uh, protect vehicles today, and you'll learn a little bit more about that in a minute. But before we start, share with me one little thing that most people don't know about you, Michael. So, Mark, a lot of people know that I'm a car guy, and a lot of people might know that I've got a dog named Lambo, um, <laughs> and that I'm a Lamborghini fan, but what people may not know is that uh, when I turned 18, I went out and got the Lamborghini Bull tattooed on my arm. Oh, wow. You're a big fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan, and I also use it as motivation, so one day I can say my tattoo matches my car. <laughs> So someday I'll get that Lambo. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, and I'm going to be asking you a question a little bit later. Maybe we'll get the same answer. But um, if I could buy you any Lamborghini today, what would it be? Oh, Mark, that is an excellent question. And <laughs> <laughs> my favorite car of all time, and this actually goes back to my first time doing Monterey Car Week in 2013, but is a lime green Verde Lamborghini Mira. I am just so in love with the body lines. I think it's one of the best looking cars ever made. It's the first mid-engine V12 car ever made. I'm just a huge fan. You know, the first Lambo I ever drove was a Mira. But that lime green color is cool because fast forward many years later, this was probably now 12, 15 years ago, met a guy who was a vintage racer. I was vintage racing at the time, and he had just restored one. Uh, one of the first cars he ever restored, and he picked that car, and he did an insane job. And I remember him taking me for a ride in that thing out at Pacific Raceway, and it was just like, oh, my gosh. It was so cool. That engine right behind your head. You picked my probably my favorite Lambo for sure, the Mira. It's beautiful. All right. Well, let's jump into things, but I want to do a proper introduction first for my listeners to kind of set the tone of who Michael is. Michael Dobbins is the marketing manager for Expel, where they design, manufacture, and provide the finest in paint protection, automotive window tint, architectural flat glass films, and interior protection. Their cutting-edge technology, innovation, and quality includes a worldwide installer network of enthusiasts trained to protect your special vehicle. Michael's a lifelong automotive enthusiast who usually is on the road, traveling the globe, attending automotive events everywhere he goes. But of course, during this COVID lockdown, it's kept him at home. But you know what? Michael's not the kind of guy that sits around. He thought, well, I've got some time in my hand. I think I'll go get an MBA. And that's what he's doing. Incredible. The mantra at his company, Expel, is trust Expel to be the only thing between you and and the open road. We're going to learn a lot more about this wonderful company and the ways they protect our vehicles. But first, a word from our valued sponsors that make this show possible. So sit tight, give them a listen, give them some love, give them some attention, because they're the reason Cars Yeah! is here every day with you. We'll be right back. Did you know the most damaging thing to your vehicle's interior is the sun. Those harsh UV rays damage your interior over time. They crack your dash, they fade the colors, and the heat makes getting into your favorite ride downright unbearable. My friends at Covercraft have the perfect solution for you. Their sunscreens are easy to use. They take seconds to install and remove and protect your vehicle while parked in the sun. They fold up easily and store away for those times you don't want to use your car cover. I have one for every one of my vehicles and you should too. They come in a variety of colors and options featuring an accordion design that makes unfolding and folding them a breeze. Want to give a gift that keeps on giving? Buy a Covercraft sunscreen for your family members and friends. They'll thank you for it every time they park their vehicle. They're custom made to fit almost any vehicle. Check out Covercraft.com for a huge number of styles, colors, and options. And here's something special from me here at Cars Yeah just for you. Use the code ya 120 at checkout at Covercraft.com and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. Go to Covercraft.com and use the code Y-E-A-H- 
120 at checkout and you get 10% off. You can thank me later. Covercraft, they've got you covered. I found a new way to protect my vehicle. American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my orange crush. But did you know they also insure your valuable collectibles of automobilia and automotive collectibles? If you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool automotive collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance and confidence that your collectibles are fully covered. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting us automotive enthusiasts since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI. Yeah, that's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love. I did. American Collectors Insurance, classic car and collectible insurance designed by collectors for collectors, just like you and me. Hey, Mark Green here. I want to invite you to an exclusive virtual wine tasting event that I'm hosting on Wednesday, August 26th at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. You've heard me talk about Adobe Road Winery's The Racing Series here on Cars Yeah. For this exclusive event, I have invited some of my fellow automotive enthusiasts and past Cars Yeah! guest to join us. McKeel Haggerty and Wayne Carini will share their love of classic cars. Lynn St. James will be providing insights on racing, and you'll learn about the challenges of choosing a best in show from Jeff Love and David Lillywhite, editors of the magnificent Magneto magazine with their virtual online concours. When you purchase two bottles of the racing series, you'll get a private invitation to this exclusive Zoom event that centers at Adobe Road Winery, where Vintner and endurance racer Kevin Buckler and his winemaker Garrett Martin will share the secrets of their unique racing series wines. Having enjoyed these delicious blends, I promise you're going to love the racing series. Here's how you join. Your purchase of two bottles from the racing series get you in the virtual door. Use the code UNICEF, all capitals, U-N-I-C-E-F, at checkout, and you'll get 10% off your purchase of any of the Racing Series wines. Plus, Adobe Road will be giving 10% of this event's sales to UNICEF. As an added bonus, Jeff and David will give everyone joining us a one-year subscription to their Magneto magazine. That's a $72 value. It's like getting an extra bottle of wine for free. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the racing series. So go to adoberoadwines.com, use the code UNICEF today, and join us for a very fast and fun evening. Wednesday, August 26th. Cheers! All right, Michael, we are back. And as we continue on this journey we call your life, I'm going to ask you for a success quarter a mantra. Some kind of saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. I like to say it's a great way to get the inspirational tires smoking here a little bit on that Mira. So, Michael, grab the wheel. Awesome question, Mark. You know, it might be a little cheesy to go back to this guy just because he said so many great things. But one of my favorite quotes is actually from Abraham Lincoln, where he said, folks are usually about as happy as they make their minds up to be. (laughs) And that kind of takes me back to my, I am so glass half full you know, business or a relationship or anything, if you go into it with a positive mindset, you're going to get a much better outcome. So I don't, you know, there's no reason to be glass half empty. Let's be glass half full and make the most of everything. Well, certainly Abraham Lincoln was no cheesy guy. And I love that quote. Decades ago, I was a a creative director and an account executive at an ad firm in San Diego. And I had a very challenging client And this lady was just always so down and sour and mad and grumpy. And I made it my goal to try to cheer her up every time I had to go meet with her. It was a challenge. And I was a young man. I was still learning how to be that interactory account executive. And I remember one day she looked at me and she said, Mark, why are you always so happy? And I said, well, why would I choose to be anything else? And I think it's the first time it, it set her back and she stopped talking for a little bit. And maybe maybe I helped her think a little bit that there can be a different way. Uh, But I love that. How have you incorporated that into the many things that you do in your life there at Expel? Yeah, no, we're a small team, a small company. I mean, growing and growing, especially from where we were when I started. But 
you know, being a small company, wearing a lot of hats, having a lot on your plate, you know, it would be easy to get a little down and, and worry about deadlines and things happening. But to get through it, you just have to stay positive and focus on your goals and do the best possible work you can and understand that, you know, not everything is going to be perfect. You do the best you can with, with what you have and and that's good. You know, we see this on social media. You, you know, people that follow you, maybe even friends or family, that are just eternally grumpy and you want so bad for them to realize there's another way to go through life. So I'm glad to yep. hear that's a big mantra in your life. You know, a while back, in fact, I can't believe it's been five years. I had your very own Eric Keller who is uh, part of Expel, very important part of Expel. And when you think about where you guys have come from the last five years, uh, people like you and he have been a big part of this growth expansion. So a shout out to him. How's Eric doing these days? Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Eric. Eric is doing great. He has moved to Austin. Um, yeah, it's funny. Back when you spoke to him five years ago, you know, we had two or three sales reps and now we've got 20 plus and wow. Eric... Eric is actually the man when you need help working with a dealership. So if you need help landing that dealership, he can fly out and make that happen and get them set up doing Expel. So Eric's still around. He's he's doing well. Well, this is another neat part of what your business supplies to us consumers, and that is a viable place to take our beloved vehicle to have the film put on the car. So I want you to talk more about Expel because during this the past five years, the company's grown so much, not only in people, but offerings, technology, all the stuff you do. So this is your chance to kind of throw that out there. All of us who have cars we love like the idea of protecting our vehicle, but we like to be able to still see it. So tell us more about all the different things that Expel has to offer these days. It's awesome, Mark. It's a really fun roller coaster that we've got. And if you're a gearhead like me, you know, being able to protect your car, you know, isn't just about protecting your investment to get a better resale value someday, but it's about, you know, making the most and uh, protecting your paint um, every day you have it. So, you know, we kind of are known mostly for our paint protection film and we've got the clear gloss film ultimate plus, which is also available in a 10 mil thick film now. So whether you do some track days or you're in a Raptor going off road, we have a, a more durable offering for you. It comes in a thinner seven mil film, which is better to contour around like interior pieces. So think about like getting into a car with piano black finishes, how they're always like scratched and oh, spiders. Yeah. We can actually put film on there and we have the pre-cut patterns for those pieces. So PPF has come a long way, paint protection film. Of course, we have our stealth, our satin finish film. We're known well for that one as well because it adds the the element of protection you want against rock chips and scratches. But it changes the appearance by adding a satin finish. So instead of having to vinyl wrap your vehicle, you can transform your finish as long as you want the same color, right? So we would go gloss black to matte black or satin black. You know, we don't go red to blue. Mm -hmm. We also offer an amazing selection of automotive window tint. In fact, we have a line called XR Plus that can block up to 98% of infrared heat, which is more like the heat you can feel. So yeah. it makes a huge difference, especially if you end up tinting your windshield, if you, if you do your sunroof, it makes the cabin cooler. It means that your air conditioning doesn't have to work nearly as hard to cool the cabin to get you to that comfortable temperature. This is very cool. And you also make films for architectural use, like windows in my home? Yeah, so that's it's a relatively new one for us, a couple years. And that's our vision line. So we tint cars and we wanted to be able to add window tint to your office, uh, to your business, to your home. Think about, you know, you're sitting in your living room watching TV and maybe there's a glare on your TV screen. We can put a window film, a window tent on your home window to help block the glare or to help block the UV to keep your favorite carpet or um, other artwork and furniture. <laughs> yeah, artwork and furniture. Keep that from fading. Of course, we can we have a window tent for your home that can block heat. And we even have a film that's a security film that can help prevent break-ins. So wow. instead of, yeah, so instead of being, you know, someone breaking into your home, breaking the glass, being in in two to three seconds, we can install a thick window film that's still clear onto your glass panes, onto your sliding glass doors that will actually, if the glass shatters, it holds it in place and is attached to the, to the frame 
um, which makes it much more difficult for the assailant to get into your home. So instead of being in in two to three seconds, it could take two to three minutes. And that is a lot of time when you're making a lot of noise trying to break into someone's home. Absolutely. Well, this is fantastic. Well, let me ask you this. One of the things I know about film and vehicles is you've got to be very skilled to put this on right. We've all seen jobs that were not done very well, especially window tint jobs where the guy at home tries to do it himself. I remember back in high school, I tried to window tint my car McGee and I found out that I did not have the skill set to do that. So let me ask you, if, if depending on where I live in the country, how do I go about finding a person that is certified and very skilled at applying Expel to my vehicle? So that's an awesome question, Mark. And yeah, I mean, our installers are amazing. And without our installers, major shout out to all of them listening. Thank you so much for what you do. It's not easy what you do. And if people really knew the difficulty of what you have to go through, they would give you much more respect than they do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're listening and you want to find an Expel installer to get window tint, paint protection, or even our new uh, ceramic coating line called Fusion Plus, mm -hmm. You can go to expel.com. That's X-P-E-L.com. In the top right, you can see the dealer locator icon. Mm -hmm. And we have installers in over 75 countries, Mark. So, Whoa. Yeah, we've we've grown quite a bit. So, of course, we, we've got you covered, literally, um, if you live in I, North America. I like that. We've got you covered. Nice job. <laughs> expel.com. There you go. I'll make sure to put a link to that on the show notes page for Michael Dobbins here on Cars. Yeah, I'd like to ask my guests about a big challenge they face in their life, maybe even a huge failure. And this is all about the lesson that this experience teaches you. So walk us through one that you've experienced, but more importantly, how did you come out of that in a positive way? So Mark, I was thinking about this and we all start somewhere and have to earn our stripes. You know, so being a young, a professional in this industry, it's kind of hard to break in and to make it a career. I came in, I put in the hours, ended up earning the title marketing manager two months before I, I turned 25. So being a young professional with a title like that, you know, you got to earn your respect. So you have to work hard. You've got to keep your head down and you've got to do the best you can to prove to the people that have a little bit of year on you that uh, you're doing the right thing right. and that management rate made the right call in making you that in that position. So, yeah. you know, it can get tough, but just keep your head down and keep going. And, and if you're passionate about something, you're going to be successful. You know, this is a, a really valuable lesson. I mean, it, it's such a young age and let's see, you're 30 now, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, 25, that is a young age to be put in that role. So what are a couple things that you learned when you were encountering those challenges? Because no doubt you ran up against people who are older than you. They're like, what are you what do you know, kiddo? I've been around for a while. What are some of the ways that you overcame those obstacles that no doubt came your way? Well, I, I think that not knowing everything, right? No one knows, knows everything. You can always get better. You can always learn more. And while there might be people in your life that, you know, know more about, you know, doing a certain thing, um, like tracking success at an event or creating a social media campaign. You know, if you show them that you have passion and knowledge for the subject matter, you know, so cars and the automotive world, you know, that passion is going to come through and people will recognize it mm -hmm. and they'll give you the chance to prove yourself. So which would be way different if you were trying to do all those things and, you know, didn't really know a whole lot about the subject matter. So, yeah, just keep your head down and try to love what you do. The other thing I've learned over the years, too, is is ask those people for their help. Teach me something. Show me something. I, I don't know everything. You've been around longer than me. What can you what can you teach me? What you, can you share with me? And that shows respect. And typically they're very happy to jump in and help you in any way they can. So great lesson learned. We're going to take a short break and thank our sponsors here. When we come back, I want to learn a little bit more about this passion you have for cars, Lamborghinis nice mark, and everything else. So sit tight, keep your seatbelts on, and we'll be right back. Let's step away from the conversation to talk about our charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits that are working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through automotive-related events, 
car shows, and drives. Among those nonprofits is RPM Foundation, a terrific organization working to keep our favorite collector cars on the road. RPM was created to ensure that the specialized skills needed to care for classic automobiles, boats, and motorcycles continue to be passed down from generation to generation. They do this by supporting training for young people with a passion for restoration and setting them up with mentors who can share their valuable knowledge. So far, they've awarded more than $3.5 million to restoration education projects across 35 states. Incredible! To learn more about RPM or to donate to their mission, visit www.rpm.foundation. You'll be glad you did. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read. Whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Here's a couple deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah. If you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right. $10 $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yow for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. All right, we are back. And uh, I want you to share a story with me that uh, kind of instigated this passion you have for cars, that pivotal moment as you knew it when you knew I'm a car guy. So, grown up, My family is not a big car family. Uh, My dad always spoke about in high school, he had a beautiful orange Plymouth Roadrunner and that he loved that car, but then he sold it too soon. My older brother, Matthew, growing up, and I'll never forget this, he had a Lamborghini Diablo poster on his wall and the car was that stunning viola purple color. Okay. Absolutely just amazing car. So that, so I always knew that I like, appreciated a good looking car and it might seem silly and maybe this is showing my age here mark but uh (laughs) june 2001 is when fast and furious came out and at the time i was 11 and a half and since that really sparked my interest in cars fast forward five years i turned 16 i get my first job working at a movie theater and that same summer is when fast and furious tokyo drift came out Mm. so getting to like put the signs up and I'm sure that I saw that movie at least a a dozen times in theater, you know, having my first car, talking to coworkers about car and having car meets and having everyone meet up at the theater to go watch a movie about cars. And so it was all, you know, I'd say though that the majority is because of Fast and Furious. (laughs) Very cool. I can see why that would spur on that passion. I want to ask you this. What was the first really special vehicle in your life? The first car that you got that you went, man, I really like this thing. This is cool. What was it? So first, I want to shout out my dad. You know, thank you, dad, for putting up with my car. I'm going to call obsession passion. (laughs) Nice. He was always good to me, letting me kind of flip cars and get into something um, every couple of years, as long as I had good grades. So that was my motivator to, to do that. So You know, high school, college, I had a Mazda Speed 3 that I loved, a WRX STI, you know, going back to Fast and Furious, right? Yeah. But I'd say my first really special car was early 2013. I had just started Expel, you know, starting to get my first what I call like big boy paychecks, right? Yeah. And I went and I bought a silver E46 M3 convertible. Mm. And I absolutely adored that car. And I ended up putting 20,000 miles on it in about 12 years, in about 12 months. Sorry. I was going to say 12 years. You didn't drive much, did you? (laughs) Yeah. 20,000 miles in 12 months. You know, I would finish work, go home. And then later at night when it cooled off because Texas, it's always hot here. um, I would drop the top and go cruise the Texas Hill Country and was just so much fun. It was so special. 
And that's definitely one of the cars that I should have hold on to. Well, my regular listeners know I've got a special place in my heart for the E46 M3 because I've had two of them. I had two E36 M3s before that, and that's what kind of got me to doing track days and eventually led to me racing. But my current car I bought new, it's silver. Uh, It's not a convertible. It's a hard top, but uh, I live up here where it rains a lot, so convertibles are kind of silly unless you like to get wet. But uh, I love that car, and and every time I think about getting something different, I just – I can't let it go. It just does everything, don't you think? Yeah, it's it's so good, and some people don't like the raspy metallic sound of that straight six, but I loved it. Yeah. Such a good car. If you can get a well-specced one, well-cared-for one, I mean, it's it's hard to beat that car at the bargain price that they are now. Well, it's interesting. I've seen, too, on Bring a Trailer, and I just recently uh, had Randy Nonnenberg uh, on Buy, Sell, Hold podcast I do with Keith Martin. He was a guest on my show five, six years ago, right? In fact, on my show, he, he announced that they're going to start doing auctions at Bring a Trailer because back in the old days, all they did was list cars. Uh, well, they've come a long way, baby. And of course, he just uh, sold that business to Hearst, which a uh, big congratulation to him. But uh, mm-hmm. th- I love that car in so many ways because it just does everything. And I've seen the value of these things. Now, finally, they kind of hit their bottom and now they're coming back up. I'm seeing some E46 M3s that are well cared for and well appointed selling for a lot more than they were just three, four years ago. Yeah, I would. Um, I'm a big fan of Bring a Trailer. Um, and most recently, Doug DeMuro's Cars and Bids new one. And I'm so I'm always on there. Right, being a car guy, you're always seeing what you can and probably can't afford. Oh, yeah. um, and I, I would love a Laguna Seca Blue mm. M3 Coupe. That would just be a dream come true. You know, when I ordered my car, I was going to get either silver or Laguna Seca Blue. And I even had Phoenix Yellow as kind of an outlier. Uh, yeah. Because it was just so different. Great choice. Yeah. Yeah. And I ended up going on the safe side. I tend to be a little too safe, maybe, with everything. <laughs> I, I look back and think, well, I wish I'd picked that blue or even that Phoenix yellow because it was just yeah. so crazy. So good. Yeah. Of a color. But uh, yeah, it's just a vehicle that I, I, at least I went with the red interior. So that was a little bit Ooh. wild and crazy. So yeah, yeah kind of cool. Yeah. My car's got the competition package, which was a nice little option as well. Uh, Mm -hmm. Sunroof delete. So, uh, yeah, I love my M3. It's a great car. Nice choice. Well, listen, Michael, if you were a vehicle, if you actually woke up tomorrow and you were manifest as a vehicle, what would you be? Well, Mark, I obviously, my my brain goes straight to Lamborghini, you know, being (laughs) being an Aventador or if we're going by birth year, a Diablo or Countach. But I think that I don't think I'm that graceful and I would probably realistically be something more like a Raptor. Okay. You know, loud, big, tons of room for, for friends and a good time and, and also American. So maybe that helps there too. But uh, yeah. My next door neighbor has one of those. He's had two of them and he let me drive them. Oh my gosh. Those things are killer. I, I, it's not mm-hmm. like driving any truck at all. It's like driving a really nice, fast, uh, SUV, uh, really is what the feeling is like. But I was just shocked at how fast that thing was. He's got his car fully wrapped because he takes it out to a ranch he has in Eastern Washington and drives it off road as it's meant to be and goes up against bushes and stuff and all that and protects that bright red paint. But Raptor. Nice choice, Michael. All right. We are up to the checkered flag here. Actually, no, we're going to we're going to go into the last lap before the checkered flag. I'm going to fire off some questions and have you uh, give us some really kind of quick blips of that Raptor throttle, which sounds oh so good. In fact, as we were talking, he just drove up the street, so I can always hear him coming here. Mm -hmm. Uh, What's one of your personal habits that you think has helped in your success in life? You know, Mark, this one kind of goes back to my mantra, but Treat everyone the way you want to be treated. And I know that's super cliche, but you never know who you, who you're going to meet. You know, you could have the most successful, wealthiest person looking super comfortable. You know, be nice to everyone you meet because you never know who you're going to work for someday. You never know who's going to toss you the keys to their supercar and say, take it out, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, those are the moments I live for. So. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's not trivial at all. The goal, the old golden rule that I learned as a little kid in church, do unto others as you would have them do to you, do unto you. And I probably butchered that a little bit, but the idea is the same is treat people nice. That's all you have to do. I wish more people in this world would do yeah. that, especially during this year with all the craziness going on. But you're right. You know, I had somebody once tell me when I was young, you never know that the next person you talk to could change your life if you treat them well. 
And mm-hmm. it's happened to me over and over again, especially with all the people I've talked to, 1,622 now on Cars. Yeah, I've, be, I've made so many great friends, close friends, people that ended up being sponsors here, people that have offered to for me to come and visit them and do things with them and drive in their cars. Last year at Pebble Beach uh, Concours, I got invited by a past guest to drive on the tour. Never been on the tour before. I did it in a 1913 Rolls Royce Ghost. Wow. I mean, holy cow. Yeah, how cool is that? So, sir. yeah, just treat people nice. That's It's a really simple way to be. How about yeah. if I could wave a magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry? Who would that individual be? Well, I think you might know where this one's coming, uh, Mark, but for me, it's going to be Paul Walker. Ah. <laughs> I yeah. would love to pick his brain and just talk cars. You know, mm-hmm. I know he was a huge car guy, big BMW enthusiast. I saw quite a few of his uh, E36 M3 lightweights sell at Bear Jackson Scottsdale. Was that this year or last year? Last year. Um, uh, yeah, well, was- this year I think it was. Right? Yeah, you know, this year's like been so weird. I don't even know what year it is sometimes. So, yeah. but yeah, those were awesome vehicles. Yeah, I uh, I would love to pick his brain and just talk cars and hang out, and that would would be a blast. Ah, uh, so sad we lost him very young yeah. age. It's just tragic. Uh, how about if uh, there's a resource out there that I would ask you to share? Something is to go to for you. What would that be? I'm a big Motor Trend fan. You know, okay. if we're talking automotive stuff, I go to the Motor Trend Network. Um, I subscribe to Motor Trend on on demand. Uh-huh. I'm a big fan of Johnny Lieberman, all of the videos that he puts out. Um, I think they make really well produced content. And I'm just you know big car guy, so I'm big into that. I watch a lot of automotive YouTube. You know, there's so much information out there if you're interested in something, especially with like with wheels on it. Um, there's probably already a video on it, so just go search. I know it's incredible. How about when it comes to automotive? automotive advice someone else has offered to you, what would that be? Buy what you love. You know, if you don't get out of your car and walk away and look at it when you're walking away from it, at least a few times, yeah, yeah. then you're probably in the wrong vehicle, yeah. you know, and that's obviously geared toward the enthusiast. Us enthusiasts appreciate people buying the Corollas and Camrys and because that allows companies to have the money to make really cool stuff, you know, shout out to the Cayenne making all sorts of awesome things happen for Porsche. So yeah. buy what you love. Oh, so important. That look back, I do a weekly blog that uh, you listeners can subscribe to if you've not already. And one of my blogs years ago was titled The Look Back. And it was exactly about that. Awesome. Always looking back at that vehicle and thinking, ah, that's so cool. Now, uh, is there a book that you've read that you think our listeners would glean some knowledge from? One of my favorite books, and I think that this is for any walk of life, is an old school book that came out in 1936, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Yeah. I listen to it every year on Audible when I'm cruising around. Even though it came out in 1936, it's just as relevant now as it was then. You know, it's incredible that book out, came out back then. It's one of those go-to books for me. Year after year, I go back. I gave my kids copies when they graduated mm-hmm. from college to think about their futures, and they both I'm so proud of them. They both are very doing really well in their professions and their careers. At least they they haven't called home for any money. So that's a good sign, I think. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, that's an awesome book. I think that should be on everybody's shelf. I think they should require that as reading in high school. I agree. Or college at the least. But uh, gosh, it just it's timeless, just basic stuff. But it's so good. It's so good. Mm. So how to win friends and influence uh, how to win friends and influence people. And I'll remind everybody there's a great place in the Cars Yeah website called Get guest recommended books where all my inspiring automotive enthusiasts have recommended great books. There's over 1,600 of them in there. I made it really easy for you to buy. Just a quick click. And of course, this one will be there. Also listed on Michael Dobbins show notes page. All right, Michael, I think we may have already answered this question at the beginning of the show, but I'll ask it again. I'm going to buy you a very cool collector vehicle today, just like I do all my guests. A couple rules to the game. You can't sell it. You got to drive it. Got to enjoy it. But it's the only one collector car you can park in your garage. So since we've been talking, is it going to still be that Mira or is there something else you'd like me to buy you? Oh, this is obviously every car guy's dream. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I mentioned Lamborghini Mira, and of course that is an awesome choice. But if, if it's the only thing I get, and if I've got it daily at some times, you know, I'm going to go with Old Faithful, one of the best cars ever made, one of the best driver uh, connected cars, super pure, super raw, and that would be an Alpine White BMW E30 M3. 
<laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, very, very nice. There's another car that's really kicked up. I mean, we just saw one sell on Bring a Trailer a couple of weeks ago for, was it $250,000? Yeah. Oh I mean, and as crazy as that is, I mean, I, I also love that. Um, that car is so important in the history of automotive everything that it, you know, deserves that kind of love. Um, so if you can afford it, God bless you. Yeah, amazing car. You know, there's another one for sale as we are recording this show. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. It actually belongs to a guy I know here in the Pacific Northwest. I've mm-hmm. got another good friend, Douglas, who was over last night. He's got a henna, uh, henna red car, an E30 M3, which is awesome. A friend of mine just sold mm-hmm. his. It was a stunning car. His name's Bill. I still don't know why he let it go, but... He- Guess it was time to move on to something else. Ah, nice ride, my friend. Yeah, and they used, you know, if I should have had you on the show about three years ago when they were inexpensive. <laughs> now, yeah, no now it's going to cost me a few a few right. coins, but that's okay. Uh, very deserving. I know it's going to be well loved, and no doubt you'll have some of that wonderful Expel put in that vehicle to protect that original mm-hmm. paint. Because I'm gonna have to find you like an original paint one that's just perfect. Oh, miles. Cool. Yeah, some, something kind of cool. Michael, you've <laughs> taken me on an awesome ride today. I want to thank you for sharing your life and your journey again shout out to your cohort colleague eric there uh i'm glad to hear he's doing well and things are great at expel before i let you go though could you offer me one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the texas hills in that alpine white e30 m3 pmw mark um first off i want to thank you for having me on here today you know my word of advice is getting a little personal i've typically said no to interviews in podcast in the past because I've got a stutter and sometimes it shows more than others, but I've always let it hold me back from doing fun things like this and doing interviews at SEMA and mm-hmm. um, doing podcasts. So, you yeah, know, it's 2020 year of COVID got to go out, you know, go all or nothing. Yeah. So I'm ho- I'm so happy that I said yes. You know, you know, and there's just nothing better than talking cars with, with fellow enthusiasts. So my advice would be to go for it. Don't let anything hold you back. You know, kudos to you. Well done, by the way. I'd have never known. You were excellent today. A great fun guest to talk to. And I want to really thank a mutual friend, Cindy Sisson, uh, for introducing me to Michael. She is what I call the super connector. Cindy has, uh, she's got me involved with so many incredible people and incredible things. So thank you, Cindy, for being a great friend. And she is uh, putting together a new business here you're going to hear about here on Cars Out very soon, which is very, very cool. In fact, today, as we're talking, Michael, she is out at Laguna Seca um, with with, uh, Adobe Road Wines with um, a very select group of people. Since we can't have these public events, uh, they're running some vintage cars out there today. So she kind of snuck out there to the track and just giving away some wine and no doubt having fun. So shout out to Cindy. Michael, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your experiences with me and the listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you so much, Mark. And yeah, shout out to Cindy. Um, I'm really glad you made this happen. And I hope you're enjoying the track out there today. That's where we need to be is out there at Laguna Seca with Cindy and some Adobe Road wine. We'll get out there. (laughs) And good weather. Yeah, I know. Exactly. You take care, my friend. Thank you, sir. You too. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars Yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know. Everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt and it's probably the only book on finance with a v max on the front cover and a classic mini cooper on the back the book's available at amazon for just ten dollars and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future i gave copies to each of my children all securities are through money concepts capital corp christopher kimball financial services is not affiliated with money concepts capital corp get your copy the saga of ike and penny today Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, 
a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!